Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got a nice, bright, sunny day here in southern Saskatchewan. Actually, uh, I think they say today is supposed to be extreme cold warning. But it's, yeah, nice day. Heading out to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about Ford part numbers. You know, it may sound kind of boring, but it's actually really interesting. You got to check this out. This is actually going to help a lot of us out when we're at the wrecking yard, where, when we're at someone's place looking at parts. Uh, sometimes you're going to find parts that are going to be, they're going to look similar, but they're going to fit from certain years and the part number will help you determine which ones are going to work for you or not. So it's actually a really good thing to understand Ford part numbers. If any of you guys uh, are into Mustangs and other Fords in general, Ford has a unique part numbering system. Where's my papers? So just as an example, and just like with cylinder heads, like everybody knows, most everybody knows that a E7TE is a Ford cylinder head. And for those of you who don't know, the E7, E is for the 80s, F is for the 90s, G is for the 2000s, C is for the 60s, D is for the 70s. So at least that gives you the decade which the uh, part was produced. The second digit, the numeric digit, is the year. So E7, that's an 87 cylinder head. So T refers to what vehicle line, and that's the truck vehicle line. They, they made that pretty obvious. So the fourth digit refers to what engineering office designed that part for the truck line. And E refers to engine engineering. So I've got a... I got a valve cover here for a five liter Mustang. I'm gonna try and guess the part number. I did look at it earlier, but I honestly forget what it is. So if this valve cover was around since 1986, and there could be revisions to it. So if this valve cover was around from 1986, it could be a E6, so E for the 80s decade, six for the sixth year and now a mustang the code for a mustang is a z so it should be an e6 z and e for engine engineering so i'm just going to look here check this out that's e6 z e so 86 z is for mustang e is for the engine engineering the 6583 is for, it's actual designated, uh, it's like the part number that probably refers to valve covers in general. And then the AB at the end, uh, that could refer to if it's an original design or revision. So if you're looking at a part number, if it has a AB versus an A, the AB is probably the most revised part. I'm, if I'm not exactly 100% perfect on this, I'm pretty close. So it's just sort of neat to be able to guess part numbers here. So you could be in the wrecking yard and you could be looking at parts or in someone's garage and looking at parts. And let's face it, for cylinder heads, the casting numbers, I know if you want to get a set of 289 heads, I think the C6OE, that's a 66 head, uh, o refers to maybe like Fairlane, Torino, uh, something like that. Let me just see here. C6OE. So for a C6OE, it's a Fairlane or a Torino part number. And E is, of course, engine engineering. It's an it's a, it's a engine part, obviously. So if, if you want to find... A certain kind of a cylinder head and you know the part number you kind of know what cars to look on now as well so it's sort of like a reverse lookup let's just check anything else here here's a good example we got a timing cover 
and it's from a 94, 95 Mustang. But when you look at the part number on there, oh, we're upside down. Okay, I found out what the RF means. It's Romeo Foundry because different parts were produced in different plants. And uh, I, I talked to a, a friend of mine who I consider a Mustang and Ford expert when it comes to extremely important details. Uh, that's what he said, it's the Romeo Foundry. And then it reminded me when it comes to say a, a 4.6 liter Ford engine, uh, some were made in the Romeo plant, some of them were made in a Windsor plant, and there was another plant, I think, in Italy that produced the aluminum blocks, and especially the two cast iron blocks between Windsor and uh, Romeo, I think the crankshafts are different, the heads are different, there's lots of differences in the blocks, there are like two different 4.6 liters, but that's the difference there. So the RF designates the Romeo Foundry. Interesting. When you look at the part number on there, it says F1SE. So F1SE, so F is for the 90s, one is for the first year, and S, I believe, is the Thunderbird line. But that timing cover came off of a 94 Mustang. So why does it say F1SE? Well, actually, in 91, I believe the Thunderbird probably had the shorter water pump on it. It had the different timing cover to allow for the shorter water pump. And if you guys remember, the early 5 liter Thunderbirds in 91 had that lower hood line and the 94 Mustang got the intake manifold with the elbow in it because it was a lower profile in intake for hood clearance. So Ford used a 91 Thunderbird timing cover on a 94 Mustang. So that's so now if you want to look for one of those timing covers, you're not just limited to looking on a 94 95 Mustang because that's only two years. You can look on an older Thunderbird too. Kind of interesting. It lets you backtrack on how to find this stuff. Just I'll give you a little shot of the uh page I downloaded. It's kind of interesting to show you what car lines. So like T is for the truck line, Z is for the Mustang. So that's, here I'll flip it over. Z is for the Mustang line. So, and then the uh, fourth digit is the engineering office responsible for the original design. So if you have an interior part, it might be a, a B. Or it might be a, uh, yeah, like I have an interior part, my uh, center console cover, the last digit is a B on there. Um, anyways, it gets really interesting how you can break things down. And it talks about how the last two digits are the revisions. So I'm not 100% an expert on here, but just lately I've I've really shed some light on myself to what these numbers really mean. And I wish I knew this stuff 20 years ago or 30 years ago. So I, uh, I really like how Ford utilized their part numbers to differentiate where things came from. I remember a Muscle Mustangs and Fast Fords article back in the 90s, I'm thinking. It was called, I think it was called The Answer Man. And there was a fellow that worked at Ford Motorsport. He was on their tech line. And he was the guy that if you phoned the Ford Motorsport tech line, this gentleman, and I forget, I wish I knew his name, he would rattle off Ford part numbers left, right, and center. If you said, hey, I, I have this, I have this car, and this is what I want to do with it. And, you know, which in intake manifold should I use or which alternator or which water pump or timing cover? And he would say, oh, you need this one. And it came from the Thunderbird parts line and it'll work on your 94 Mustang or whatever. So uh, to be able to know how to decipher it, you know, it takes time. It's like anything else. But I really think it's interesting and and I, I think it's worth looking into if you if you plan on doing any restorations on cars. 
I know I was at my buddy Shane's place the other day looking for a a pillar plastic for the 92 and I needed a red one and he had a 79 so a D9 part number and he had an E3 part number so he had a 79 and a 83 a pillar plastic and we knew they wouldn't work because at the very bottom it's shaped differently than on a 92 plus the bottom screw hole is on a different angle than on the 92 so it wouldn't work with my car but at a glance you could easily you could very easily uh, run into uh, picking up the wrong part and that you won't know until you get home sometimes what if you're out in the middle of the country and your cell phone service isn't good and you can't just look something up on the internet if you know a general understanding of how Ford part numbers work it'll really help you out I you know the more I dive into this the more interesting I find it maybe when I was 25 years old I really wasn't that interested in these little finicky little details but for some of us as we get older it's kind of a cool thing to know how to decipher some of this stuff so you can run across something in the bush and know where it came from or you can backtrack to find a part knowing the car line it came from it's just awesome it's brilliant and i just find it so interesting i really hope this helps you guys out and uh, if you have any other comments in the comment section regarding the part numbers or anything you found out by trying to decipher the part numbers, let us know. Like I said, it's all a part of the puzzle. Thanks for watching and thanks for hanging out with us and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.